Hello, hi, welcome. It's really great to have you here. Um, I'd like to introduce everybody. Uh, Nina Fischer and Marwan Sani with her film of freedom of movement today. Uh, Gustav Hofer and Luca Ragazzi with their movie Dictatorship. And also Alexander Kolter from the Scottish Film Festival, the Document Human Rights Film Festival in Glasgow. Welcome. Well, really nice to have you here. Um, yeah, freedom of, of movement is, I think, um, a theme that we as Europeans are quite familiar with. And we also, in a way, almost take it for granted. We're free to move anywhere we want. We have relatively open borders in most countries. But why did you choose that specific title for your film? And um, what, what's the story behind it? Yeah, maybe it's especially because not everybody has this freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. And um, this is like the Human Rights Festival. And maybe here this Charter of uh, Human Rights is also well known in Nür Nuremberg. But we think it would be great for us, it would be great to follow this idea that there's freedom of movement for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we choose this as a title for our movie because um, a few years ago there was this march from uh, refugees from all over Germany or maybe even all over Europe who are marching towards Berlin mm -hmm. and then they were living on a, on a place uh, in Kreuzberg all together and uh, we talked and discussed a lot and people uh, helped also a lot and um, at the same time we had the opportunity to shoot a movie in uh, Italy, in Rome because mm -hmm. we also lived for a while there and um, we, we choose to combine uh, this work on the new movie and the title because we thought it's uh, not specific, so the title should be yeah, like a slogan or also like a statement. I see. Um, what, what goals are you trying to achieve with your film specifically? And have they, have they been met so far? How was your film received? Um, like the goal was to um, to match like three different or to bring to bring together uh, three different uh, times like past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. So the film is also um, divided into three chapters. So we are dealing with the past, like the um, um, Olympic Games in 1960 in Rome. Uh, These were the first Olympic Games in. In Italy, after Second World War, and Italy had the chance to show the world uh, that they are now um, that they overcome fa uh, the fascist times, mm -hmm. now a, a democratic country. And um, like well, one of the key disciplines of, is the marathon, always in Olympic Games and mm -hmm. some in the Summer Games. Um, and this time, uh, the Ethiopian runner Abel Bekila won um, the Olympic uh, the, this um, this run. And Ethiopia was the only country which was um, attacked by Italy during the, uh, no, before the Second World War in 19, 1936. And uh, the world press um, celebrated um, the win of uh, Be Bekila as a kind of, um, some, some papers wrote it was a revenge or, um, or um, a symbol, a, symb a symbolic victory um, that um, Africa is becoming more uh, self-confident and also um, the times of the colonial or the colonial times are over now so this was a very symbolic victory then the second part is a reenactment of the of the run in our movie mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this was done by a refugee we we met um, in in rome and he's playing in a football team a refugee football team so uh, all the other participants are playing together with him in this in this team which is organized by an italian um, amateur football club on the field where pasolini was playing football so there's a com it's communist football yeah. club before, before. <laughs> now it's a refu refugee football club and the third part is a kind of uh, nightmare um, with this animation where the Palazzo um, della Civilità Italiana, that's the name of this uh, big monument which you see in the film, mm -hmm. where there's also this chorus singing on top of, 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 the, of the roof. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this was an, uh, a kind of an image where um, this could show if the, if fas the fascism um, is uh, or one the Second World War, or also the, the danger that uh, fascism, fascism and populist times are coming back right now, also all over Europe. Mm -hmm. So we went, we uh, also um, wanted to tell that um, this, this uh, colonial times are not over because um, mm -hmm. it just started to, to talk about it in Europe. Yes. 
So, um, so what else would be um, a connective tissue in a way where you would try to connect these three chapters with one another? Were there more elements than that? I mean, fascism is still something that is, well, very present in, in some countries and even in ours, I'm almost embarrassed to say. So um, how, how did that play a role in the, in the con concept of the film? Yeah, there are different um, ways to look at it and also different uh, starting points. And one is also the idea that uh, in a city, in many cities in Europe, also in Berlin, where we come from, there are still these uh, buildings, like the remnants of the past, like the fascist yeah. buildings. And we've been in Italy already a few years before for an investigation and the research about it. So how are these uh, buildings used today? So mm. what, what shall we do with this heritage? Uh, Shall we use it again or destroy it or use it in a different way? Mm -hmm. And we did also interviews with a lot of young people in Rome who never really go there. And in the 90s, maybe in the EUR, in this area, there was a lot of raves and so. Mm -hmm. But then from the middle of like 2011, 12, um, and at that time, the Berlusconi era, they started mm -hmm. again to renovate and brush up all these buildings, maybe to use it again and to show like a show off um, a place. And so the, the meaning and the uh, of these buildings and how to use the changes always and it has also for us a lot to do with the identity of a city mm -hmm. or a, a place so how do you use buildings uh, if you leave them they are just empty or if you use it for something else and also now nowadays um, of course a lot of new people are coming to Europe and uh, also looking for empty space and looking mm -hmm. for space uh, to create maybe the new uh, a new community and uh, yeah, to create new life and be new um, citizens and so place can also be defined and be used in a different way mm -hmm. and so the third part is also a kind of intervention when this young uh, with this chorus these youngsters uh, uh, reclaim like a reclaiming of the city act so they mm -hmm. come and they take over uh, the building and they they sing the song uh, in a different way there's this song, uh, it's a quote uh, that's written on, on the building. Mm -hmm. It's a quote actually of, uh, of Mussolini. And it says, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of the uh, point of view from Italy. So mm -hmm. we are a poet, uh, no, we are, uh, people. we are people, uh, un popolo. We are people or nations mm -hmm. like poets and uh, uh, scientists and heroes and navigators and uh, immigrants. But it was meant to be like uh, taking over another country like mm -hmm. Ethiopia at that time. But if you read the sentence today, you could also reclaim it for yourself and uh, it mm -hmm. could There's have another meaning. We are yeah. all um, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, people like uh, poets so or exclusive. navigators. Mm -hmm. And so it's also a reclaiming of a certain mm -hmm. slogan and that could be also for us being a symbol for reclaiming the place again. Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a <laughs> beautiful concept. I mean, uh, because there are also other possibilities how to deal with um, almost like um, the language that, that mm -hmm. fascism also presented yes. and to, to turn those words into something else and a mm -hmm. meaning that can be integral to societies coming, in, yeah. coming together. And I think, um, yeah, especially with, uh, with Italy and uh, Berlusconi that also uh, throws up interesting uh, questions regarding not only uh, issues of race and ethnicity but also um, gender, which uh, leads me to, to your movie, uh, Dictatorship, which uh, has an interesting uh, title, especially because of the specific spelling that you chose. Um, yeah, what, um, what is your movie really about and, and what made you choose this um, the subject for yourselves to really dive into? Um, when when we make a film, is always uh, connected with something which we are actually uh, passing through, we are experiencing, and uh, we care about. Yeah, of course. And uh, in this case, uh, we real that was three years ago when we start uh, thinking about this new project. Uh, we we realized that the the attitude in our country, not just. Uh, on the mass media or in the social media, but also in the political languages, was a really, really, um, I don't want to say mm, sexist, but actually I want to talk about misogynia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's like a bomb who exploded in the country. This is a strong misogynia. Maybe it was there, but nobody paid attention, but now it's so obvious. 
So we, we decided to make a film about that and to make like an inquiry in order to find out uh, why it's so strong and is maybe because uh, we had actually uh, Mussolini for 20 years or maybe because we have the church in the country which doesn't help and or maybe because uh, we had the Berlusconi's not just as a politician but as a entrepreneur of uh, entrepreneur entrepreneur TV. of the TV for over 40 years now mm. and through his television he created his new model of a female and uh, at the end, we find out that it's a mix of all of those elements. But interestingly, you know, even though the film is based uh, in, in Italy, we see that people from different countries where we've been able to show the film could relate to it. Mm -hmm. So it's a film about Italy, but um, unfortunately, sexism is a very uni universal issue. And the reason why um, Italy helps understanding things, uh, because in Italy things are more, more outspoken, they are there, and people show them. So I think um, it's an illusion to think that uh, you know, other European countries don't have the same problem. It's just hidden in a better way. But if you look at the st uh, statistics finally, um, for example in Germany you have less women in politics than in Italy and, and nowadays. So um, I think Italy therefore is a very good case study in order to make a universal problem visible. For example, in Italy now, since few years, we are obsessed with these new terms, feminicide, which means uh, women has been, been killed, killed by, by their husband or former boyfriend. And we have uh, actually one every second slash three days. And it's the same in German, but in German nobody talks about that things. And when we talk about the people said, no, really, it happens in Germany as well. Yeah. But, but in Italy we, we talk about so, that. So that's something day. that happened over the past five years, I would say, that uh, the attention on uh, violence against women within the couple uh, became a, a public issue, uh, an important issue. And also, you know, um, in our film we care a lot about language. Um, because there's a, a huge resistance in Italy in using the uh, female terms in, 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 like in any higher position. Mm -hmm. So to say uh, president is president, um, they usually use uh, the male form also for women or minister, a ministro or, mayor, or, or, or yes, ministra. Or so they never use, um, there's a big resistance in using the female term. Uh, so. Uh, it's, it's Are those female terms already established? <laughs> That's the, the reason. They, um, there's a res the resistance because with language you try to create borders, and uh, having this resistance, not being, not showing that you know that it could become normal saying ministra or sindaca, which means uh, uh, mayor or, or, or minister. Um, leaves the Im imagination that it's it keeps to be, uh, a, a male world and it uh, sets women auto uh, automatically out of that world. Because they're not even part of the language that's... Exactly. Yes, but language, language can change every day, you know, that's why yeah, we, that's we print uh, every year a new dictionary, other ways we could use the one Latin. of the past uh, <laughs> century. <laughs> or, and, um, uh, and for example, that's why it's important that this new term femi feminicide has been created, because, you know, it's not just a homicide, it's a real... It's the fact that it's uh, the husband or the partner that kills his, uh, his wife or, or girlfriend. So it's a very specific violence. And so in the film, uh, our film starts in a very entertaining, light way. Um, and then it gets deeper and, and deeper into the issue of, uh, of violence that lies beneath this whole uh, system of, um, uh, that has been created, of this patriarchy, basically, that men don't want to be uh, taken away. Mm -hmm. And what kind of um, issues did you face while creating this film? Because I imagine there was quite a bit. Well, the thing is, you know, it's a very huge issue. So, uh, of course, it's, it's hard to... It's great to write about it, but it's hard to make a film um, about it because um, you also want... In our case, we like to entertain our uh, audience as well. So it's uh, Luca plays a bit the the Italian macho in the film, and I'm more the Nordic guy who says, "Oh, who am I going to marry? I can't marry uh, like a macho." 
And so um, together we decide to explore, you know, why ha uh, is he the way he is, you know, being a, a progressive or considering himself a progressive Italian man. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, explore, you know, the biological um, arguments, the uh, social, uh, sociological, the historical. And so going through different uh, layers uh, of this uh, theme, we, we try to give an answer to... Yeah, each of those reason. people we met, like scientists or psychologists or sociologists, they give us a piece for the entire puzzle. And just in the ed at the end of the film, we have the entire picture. And the good um, message of our film is that you there can. There is a message. Oh, that's yeah. good news. <laughs> <laughs> that you yes, can. Tell us, please. You can be cured from sexism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can overcome it. Look at me. I'm <laughs> perfect <laughs> example. I'm clean. <laughs> I, I was meaning to ask you, uh, how, how did that make you feel while you um, created the film? Because uh, he, he called you a macho, and how do you think about that now? You know, as I always say, it, to make this film was a kind of a curse because it's like to wear glasses that made you see the reality for what it is. And now I can't take off those glasses. It's <laughs> terrible. Now I can see every day these uh, elements of uh, sexism in every little jest uh, of That's the true. everyday life. It's horrible. It's horrible. I would like to do something, but of course I can't. But. Uh, it's so obvious there is still such a long way to do. Well, I think um, seeing could probably be the first step or having, you know, these glasses made for other people to put on. Yeah. Eventually. And, and you know, um, sometimes we've been asked, well, uh, why should it be two men to make a film about this issue? But for us, that's the point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a problem for the men. The women have to live with the consequences uh, of that. But uh, it's the men who have to change attitude. And that's, uh, you know, the film is an invitation to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to explore to that. Go I think that also path. in a very humorous way, too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because otherwise you would just with, uh, kill yourself. And well, there's so much <laughs> killing around. Hopefully so. <laughs> not, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I think that's an important element because uh, the, the issues that you're talking about are incredibly serious, but there has to be some some sort of way to, to enter that perspective because I think if you beat people over the head with a, with a bat, you know, just to, they have to see, they have to understand that it doesn't, I don't think it, it will work like that, but essentially... But you know giving, what's happened, for example, yeah. we've been quite shocked by few film festivals, actually more than one, refused the film, not just because they don't consider it good enough, but because they told us the, the men who have to select the films, they felt uncomfortable about the idea that that issue has been treated by two men. is a female issue. And I think it's an excuse because uh, until female talk about that issue, men can say, okay, it's your business, who cares? But until the moment two, two men decided to talk about that issue, it's a problem to deal with. And, uh, and actually it's peculiar because we receive many emails from different festivals. That's mm. interesting. And with that word, uncomfortable. Yeah. Strange. <laughs> Strange indeed. <laughs> um, because at least, w would you say that, that men in general should be a, a part of the, the larger conversation here? Well, well, they should start a conversation with themselves, you know. It's, uh, they have avoided this conversation for uh, centuries or <laughs> since years. ever. So it's time to start. Mm. Yeah. Um, Yes, Alexandra, I wanted to ask you how, because we have, we have so many different issues that we're talking about today, um, how, how is that implemented in, in your film festival in Glasgow and what are the differences, say, to, to ours here or um, uh, in, in Geneva, for, for example, because we, had, we were lucky enough to have Isabel Gatica here from Geneva last time and I, I spoke to her and uh, she was absolutely wonderful, but we also touched upon uh, equality and uh, femininity and feminism and stuff like that. And I wanted to ask you how those themes play a role for your film festival, which is still coming up later this month. Yeah, and actually in just a few weeks time, uh, we're having a document human rights film festival. And it's actually really interesting to hear the filmmakers perspectives, because this is something in our programming practice. We're actually uh, looking a lot at how the film was made and how critical the filmmakers are of their own practice. and. Mm -hmm. 
of the kind of the process of making the film and that's always a very important issue for us when we program films so for instance yeah being very reflective of for instance the fact that you are two men making a film about this topic um, and that's always um, yeah a very important point um, and yeah we are um, dealing with a lot of issues in our festival that are uh, important now at this particular moment. So we also have a strand on, we will have a strand on the European imaginary and identity. So this kind of um, refugee migration, but also in the European context, because we feel it's important again, because we are a European festival mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in Western Europe. So we're kind of thinking about um, what are the things that we can do to make it better, to improve our kind of um, opinions and perspectives on this issue um, like that and uh, we're also um, looking at um, environmental uh, justice which mm -hmm. I think is uh, kind of this very broad theme that it's becoming more important than I think it's becoming more important as part of human rights discourse mm -hmm. more generally uh, because it has impact in all all these different at all these different levels and layers it's of society. Issue. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, and we are also, we're trying to be very critical about how we program films because, again, it's very important as um, who decides on what films will be shown and mm -hmm. why. Um, because I realize that festivals are actually playing a very important role in helping films reach out to audiences. So, yeah, uh, to get that exposure. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, it's, programmers are becoming are having a more and more important role in in that so we're mm -hmm. trying to be very mindful about who programs the film how many um, like who is who has the, the kind of power to show these films to audiences mm -hmm. and we're trying to be very reflective of that and trying to acknowledge our own uh, biases or mm -hmm. um, ideas of the world and things well, like that. Um, I think that's uh, very interesting because I, I was wondering what the criteria yeah. are for actually uh, choosing these films. Are you trying to uh, really incorporate what the, what the zeitgeist is at the mm -hmm. moment and leave other movies behind? Because especially if, if you have a film festival like mm -hmm. ours that is uh, you know, about human rights, yeah. almost every story is mm -hmm. impactful and emotional in some way yeah. and needs to be told. But how, how, do, you, how do you tell which one's essentially more important uh, yeah. to the festival. I think that's a, that's a tough choice and mm -hmm. I was wondering how, how do you go about that? Yeah, it's not, not, an, e not an easy question to answer in uh, just a few minutes now, but it's um, basically um, because there are so many films, documentary films being made now um, and in circulation, so we receive over um, 300 submissions, uh, film submissions, and we're kind of a small to medium-sized festival, so I imagine that there are festivals that receive much more than that. And uh, it's very difficult to decide like what issue mm -hmm. is the most important, mm -hmm. which vision is the most creative or original, um, what is relevant to show now as opposed to in a year from now. And um, all these kind of, I, I don't know, we don't have, uh, we as a festival, we don't have an answer or a kind of a hierarchy of how these things are mm -hmm. playing out. Um, in, in our festival, we do try and we found some similarities with Nuremberg uh, mm -hmm. in this sense that we do try to um, emphasize the kind of vision and creativity in approaching the topic. Just because, as I've said, there are so many films on very sim um, some kind of the same topics, for instance, like migration or um, sexism and things like that and we try to find the films that have the most original approach or mm -hmm. um, interesting structure and that kind of make you think uh, beyond that particular issue but reflect on the wider problems of society and reflect on ourselves as well um, so this this would be I guess um, a very important criteria for us mm -hmm. um, but also of course the subject matter and how important it is now to look at these issues and especially um, we try to avoid showing films that are um, presenting something that happens very far away um, and looking at a kind of a very distant suffering and uh, you know what is the role of ourselves looking at that and it's it's sometimes I find it a bit problematic of just looking at distant suffering and not being able to do anything and um, it's it's creating even more distance between you know us here and other places of the in, in the world 
Um, so yeah, a mixture of all these things. But we also look at representation and who makes the film. We're trying to be very mindful of who's making the film, for what reasons, and how uh, those filmmakers are representing the subject matter. So, yeah. so I imagine that there has to be some sort of outlook for, for the future as well, or, mm -hmm. or the movies will, will impact an audience or not. And uh, that would actually lead me to a question that considers all of you. Um, what, what would you like your movies to achieve, this one or maybe even uh, projects in the future? What are, your, what are your goals that you have in mind? <laughs> I think that uh, we all knew that film can't change the world, but maybe they can create uh, and stimulate a debate, which is just, it's already a good achieve, I guess. And mm, I mean, I'm always glad when after a screening um, we receive a message on Facebook or email of, um, of people, especially now with this film of men, who, uh, who thank us, saying, okay, now I understood what my girlfriend tried to tell me. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, that's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, one couple is safe. For <laughs> I like the fact that the movies, um, uh, thanks to festivals, can be shown on really different uh, parts of the world in different uh, contexts, and uh, through these contexts, always um, in case we travel there we can also get uh, to know different people and to start uh, communicating about uh, these subjects we're mm -hmm. dealing also in our artworks and films and so i think this is the best that the movies can also start a communication and uh, people can think over it also later on because movies can also travel without us and that's a great thing i think yeah, but I think, I think also that it's uh, like the goal for, for films or why we, yeah. why we make films and um, the subject should be also for me uh, something which is uh, like um, present and there's a debate. Yeah. So not something uh, which is taken out of nothing. So it should have uh, a, rel a relation to what's going on no right now and also which uh, will have an impact for the future so that we can also um, uh, um, yeah, deal with subjects which will, which will uh, not be just a, um, a moment of, of, um, of a zeitgeist, but also will have an impact for the future. I would uh, only add that, so I think that it's very important to show these kinds of films and to kind of have uh, produce some kind of change at individual level, so how we react to things, how we think about relationships and our role in society, but also I think the community and the collective aspect is really important and that comes out of screenings like these where um, at festivals such as these one where um, you know people come together and there can be a potential for kind of further action or organizing on mm. um, any kind of issues so and what I really liked here uh, at the festival where the screenings uh, with schools I think they have a real uh, long-term impact mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, what uh, festivals uh, should really work on because you, you're building uh, audiences, but you also uh, build um, consciousness uh, on issues. And um, that was really, really a uh, great experience. And rise a better society for tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. hopefully. <laughs> Maybe don't have to change their perspective or already ideally develop a perspective that kind of um, dissolves yeah, the you know, at least um, you create a debate within them as well, within uh, within their class. You know, um, yesterday we had, three, three we had three screenings. Three screenings with the high school was the best thing. But we noticed thing. that um, <laughs> there is still, you know, the issue, the, the fact that we are uh, a couple of two men in the um, who made the film and who are in the film. For still, for some young people, it's a problem. But a conversation started there, you know. I mean, um, we, we've been asking every screening about it. But in, in one screening, the question was, aren't you ashamed of being gay? So um, we said, no, of course uh, we, uh, we are not. Actually, we are proud to be gay. And then uh, applause started in the class. And I'm sure that uh, these guys will continue the conversation after. So, um, for the rest of the year, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's good because I, I, at this age, 
you have to stimulate political discussion because otherwise uh, if, once they are out of school there is no space for political discussion. I see. Yeah. And now, um, what about uh, your, your festival that's, that's coming up? Like what would be, what would satisfy you in the end after mm -hmm. say the festival is over and if you've, you've presented your movies and mm -hmm. everything went uh, ideally the way you want it, what, what would that look like for you? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we're actually um, thinking about encouraging more discussion events um, because we think, as a, I think discussion events are as important as the film mm -hmm. in themselves in the festival context in the sense that that's where um, you know the, the film's messages can be taken further and um, it would be great if um, with our festival uh, we can create that kind of those kinds of discussions that continue after the festival. Uh, and we also hope to um, kind of build on our year-round activities, so not just to have four days of a festival, because these are usually not enough to actually get into the, the issues and the problems that we want to um, encourage more debate on. So it would be great if we can actually continue this work throughout the year. And uh, this is something that we're also thinking of developing with our festival, especially the education side of things. Mm -hmm. and going more than just the festival audience, which mm. is limited in a way. It's, um, I get a sense that sometimes festivals are kind of uh, presenting in this kind of bubble or mm. the kind of kind of the same people are starting to show up at, at the same events. So see. it's good to actually reach out to other yeah. audiences. So this is um, something that we're also hoping to achieve. Like if we have a good festival, if we have good discussions, if you raise more awareness, then we can perhaps do more and reach out more. Mm. Great. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Best of luck and uh, yeah, enjoy the festival. Yes, we will. <laughs>